So when I left all of my big catering and consulting and I was doing this sort of celebrity chef stuff everywhere, and when I went to the Ross School, it was kind of a big deal and we were really high profile. I did an interview, that was the big article that kind of pushed this all over the top. And so when I kept saying, well, I'm not a chef anymore, I said, I'm a lunch lady, and that's it, I'm a lunch lady. And so one of them quipped back, well, if you're a lunch lady, you're the renegade lunch lady. All these years later, it's stuck. When I first took over and built the program, the third grade girls came into the cafeteria and all sat down to have a hunger strike, which was, so totally rascal. And of course I'm trying not to giggle at them, but they're all sitting down in front of me and I asked them what they were doing and they said they were having a hunger strike. And I said, why? And they said, well, we hate your grilled cheese sandwiches. And I said, well, what do you hate about the grilled cheese sandwiches? Well, the bread's not white and the cheese isn't melty. And so we then went on a crusade to teach them all about bread and we baked bread with them and we had cheese tastings with them and we brought in a cheese maker. Now, now it's next year and we see the fourth graders bringing the third graders through the cafeteria, telling them, oh, you guys, it's gonna be so great. You're gonna love the food. We got, it. We got Chef Ann to fix it. When I decided I was going to be a chef, I applied to the Culinary Institute and it was immediately rejected because I didn't have a high school diploma and I had no money. So I drove from Colorado back east. I hadn't been in school for eight years, so I didn't know how to learn. I didn't really read very well or anything. And so I went to Massachusetts and I said, okay, I want to take the GED. And I said, just give me the test. I passed the test. And then when I was in the Culinary Institute, I didn't have any money. I was working full time and I thought, okay, I'm going to write a book and it's going to be a women's places in the kitchen because that was the worst thing anybody could say to me, you know, in the 70s, and yet here I was killing myself to do it. When I was at the Culinary Institute, anyone who was graduating at the top of their class could go to any interview. So I decided to interview for Holland America Cruise Lines, and they said they wouldn't interview me. And I said, why not? And they said, we don't take women. So I went to the president of the school and said, if they don't take women, they shouldn't be here interviewing. He backed me up on that. So then they interviewed me and offered me a job, and I basically said, you're not you know, supporting women. And they said, well, why don't you come and work for us? So I was one of the first three women ever to work in kitchens on cruise ships. It was all European men. There were three of us and hundreds and hundreds of guys. And they wanted nothing to do with women in the kitchen. In fact, what they said is that women in the kitchen were really bad luck and the boat would sink. So one of the first jobs they gave me to do was cut fish. And in the side of the boat, in the side of the ship, there was like a coal chute and they would open it up and the fish would come in and you would have on waders and fish would come down the chute still alive and you'd be grabbing live snapping fish and learning how to cut them so I cut really good fish when I got asked to take over school. I had already been into sustainability and I'd already cooked at the White House before I did any of that. And I could bring that sensibility about food, this idea about huge production, the ability to project manage, and I knew how to run computers before there were really even any software. So all of that sort of set me up. So after I got the job offer in New York, I looked at it and went, you know, this is a problem that can be solved. And that's how I get into school food. The thing that's the saddest about what happens with kids in food is how bad we feed them. And I think we don't even understand how badly we're feeding the kids. When we think about that as a nation, as adults, we spend more on a cup of coffee or a bente latte than we spend on feeding a kid for an entire week. It's not an individual school. It's the broken food system and the culture of rich America that has supported this idea that kids don't matter or poor kids don't matter or, you know, food doesn't matter. I think the thing that I'm most proud of is founding the Chef Ann Foundation and all the work it does throughout the country. As I travel around the country talking about how important it is to serve kids scratch-cooked foods, real foods made from real ingredients, 
people would say, we can't do that, or how do we do that? So I was sitting around one day and I was thinking, I want to develop a digital tool for every single school food service person, parent, advocate, government person, administrator in the country. And I think the School Food Institute is here to support that type of education. What I think it's going to be able to do is help school districts all across the country segue from how we process to scratch cooked foods. It's a social justice issue. If we want our world to be the best that can be, if we want our children who are going to oversee and collaborate in the world of the future, they have to be well-fed, well-nourished, so they can be active parts of the global citizenry. I hope that everyone who takes all of these courses comes away with one thing out of every course, one thing that they can do different that will help change the life and health of children in their school.